All right, welcome around. If you're here for the Cycleman Talk, my name is Kevin Stevens. I'm the lead grower here at Plant Delights Nursery. And I brought a friend with us today. This is a Cycleman, and this is a Kuim. This is one of the very few species that are going to be blooming in this time of year. They start blooming in about February. Most Cyclamen are sleeping over the summer. They go dormant and they end up in around July waking up. They usually erupt up with their first set of flowers followed by the leaves. They either come up with a flower bud, which I'll show you as I pass this around, or a capsule. The capsule is what causes that leaf to go ahead and start forming. The flower bud, of course, is going to go ahead and open up into your flower. So most cyclamen that we have as of right now <clears throat> are going to be more in our leaf state. And the really cool thing about cyclamen is it's like a snowflake. Everyone is different. It's not going to, you're not going to see the same leaf pattern. You're not going to see the same flower structure. The flowers can change from time to time. Sometimes they're a little bit more white, pink, lavender at different times of year, depending on the nutrition that the plant's been absorbing through that time as well. So it's a lot like a begonia if you look at it, where it has that really cool ivy pattern. And that's going to be very indicative of a lot of the cyclamen. We do have straight silver leaf patterns such as this. <clears throat> and this heavier form right here. So there's a multitude of things that you can do with cyclamen. And I already heard somebody say, I don't have enough shade. Well, my son comes from here straight across and they live right there. So it's not just a shade plant. They can do well in the shade as well. The biggest thing with the cyclamen is they need to be remain completely dry in the summer. That's where you're gonna end up losing it, exactly. So by planting it inside a rock wall like this or an overhang, if I was to be thinking about planting spaces, you can plant something in an overhang like this where it's gonna be dry and it'll run it down for any water to just give it a little bit of moisture throughout the summer when it's sleeping. <clears throat> this is an extremely rare one here. This one's actually from Russia. And most of the cyclamen are from the Mediterranean area, basically in south, southern Europe, up into Asia and into Europe. This one actually came to us from Russia. It's all green form. It is another similar cyclamen that is going to bloom at this type of year. So there's also many different varieties that are all gonna be in their leaf form. This is a long leaf heterofolia. And then this is more of the dwarf version. So you're gonna have two different sizes when you're planting to see how you want that plant to landscape with. Do you want a tight cluster or do we want it to be really loose and very free flowing with everything? <clears throat> These are in the hot sun. And you don't water them in the sun. Nope. Nope. We never have to. Never have to. And that's kind of the misconception that a lot of people had. And it's very versatile. It's one large. Nope. Nope. They do just fine in part shade. So if I wanted to go ahead and think about planting it like this, that's just fine. It's not going to hurt it. The biggest thing when you start planting in shade is you're going to get a little bit less flowers. That's what's going to happen. So the flowers are going to be pulled on by that additional energy that's stored in that tuber. And it's one giant tuber. The bigger that they get, they're going to spread out like a pancake. So they will need some room to grow over time. If you confine them, they're going to stay very small. So if you want them to get a little bit bigger, you take something and you put it into a bigger area. And like I said, I always recommend off the ground and usually at an angle. And the reason why, and I'll show you as we continue our walk, there's a giant tuber and that center of that tuber, if water sits on it too long, is going to end up rotting. Okay, let's go take a look at that big tuber system that we have in our back crevice garden. Let's let everybody catch up for a second because this is going to answer a few more questions that we might have. Uh, it will get a little bit bigger. At, It'll get a little bit bigger right now, and I'm going to let everybody catch up, and we'll talk about this. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only challenge I've had is the squirrels run off with them because they think it's a hickory nut. 
That's the biggest challenge I've had. That's why hiding them works best for me. So as you can see, this is the additional side of the coin. This one's in all shade. So this is how versatile they are. We just came from an area that is fully in the sun most of the time to an area that hardly ever sees sun. And as you can see, it's growing just fine. If you put your hand in and actually feel this, it's about the size of a tennis ball or apple at this point. And it's gonna start pancaking out. From that very center, that's where all of the capsules and the actual flower buds start from. <clears throat> if that ends up rotting, that's the reason that you're gonna end up losing a cyclamen. They're very, very hardy. They're hardy up to probably 3A. So they're really good to winter over in the cool winter time. And once again, it's really interesting, like species like these, as well as this, there's not many plants in the winter that are thriving. A lot of things have went to bed for the year, especially species that are going to be native to us. So to have a little bit of flower and color throughout that wintertime garden, especially when it's strategically placed, everybody could have walked by this all day and not seen it. And that's kind of one of those plants that can be that really cool accent plant in a lot of different areas. Anybody have any questions? Eventually, the bigger ones that I've seen in Europe and such, they'll get the size of a dinner plate. They'll get really big once they're established. And it would take probably 20 or 30 years to really get a big established one, just like with any other kind of tuber um, perennial. It's going to be a very similar. And that's going to be based on how much sunlight, how much good uh, energy they're actually storing up in that system. So if they're getting what they're needing, <clears throat> whether that's more sun, less sun, this is going to be a little bit less on the leaf and the flower because, like I said, it's in the shade, but it's going to live just fine. Whereas the ones that are in full sun are going to have a little bit more flower to them. But that's going to be normal with just about any plant. Does the flower last that long? The flowers will last probably around two to three weeks, depending. It depends on the cultivar. They'll all come up at different times of the year. But they're really beautiful when they first come up around July, August. Somewhere in that time, September, that's when the earlier versions come up. Some of them start coming up as late as October, November, December. So there is a timing to them where they actually start to root out because they're going to go really dormant. And when they go dormant, they're going to suck everything back, lose all the foliage, lose any flower. And then they're going to wait and put all that energy back into the next time they wake up. Uh, they're very, very minimum. They're very minimum needs. Um, they seem to get a lot from what they need just naturally, so they're probably going to be uh, eating through the actual leaf structure more on a foliolic level that they're going to have a lot better consumption with. You can add a little bit of fertilizer to them. We have done that and there's no issues with it at all. You don't get any burn or anything else. We ha just use a little bit of a NutriCoat fertilizer with these to make sure they stay nice and green. But once again, being in a pot structure is a little bit more challenging. When you're outside, we have natural rainwater that's going to have minerals and things running down on these. In a pot's a whole different story when we're growing. Now, is this just concrete from like a driveway? That's exactly what it is. We had uh, large concrete trucks. Um, it's crevice gardening. It is a European technique that was really done a lot of in Austria at the time. And usually what we'll do is we'll bring in these nice big slabs of rock and then in between we'll do a permatill, which is that real fine gray stone that you guys see lying around. Okay. And then that's also packed with a little bit of dirt as well. So it's a nice blend. It holds everything together. But it gives us a lot of extreme planting situations because I can now stack plants where I'm having different things coming up at different times. We have some of the agaves, as you see, like over here, that is literally in one crevice. And you can see how big that actually gets. Some of these root systems will just dive down and it gives it that additional ground that you're usually not gonna get if you're just trying to plant them. And it gives us a lot more cultivar planting space and a lot more options to do things with. <clears throat> the other thing is it's not going to a landfill now. It's actually being reused in a very thought, you know, uh, thought provoking way to go ahead and, you know, reuse, renew, recycle that whole kind of right. thought and vibe with it as well. Any other questions anybody have? Yep. Sure. We're going to go ahead. I'll be happy to pass that around. That's a 
a really good example right now of one that is in all stages of growth, which is usually amazing. Usually I can catch them in one stage or another. So this is a really uh, nice time at this point in year, late February to early March, where I can have a really good example. <clears throat> when is a good time for planting? Anytime, anytime, yeah. Uh, they really are not gonna matter. They're, they're, they're cold resistant. Once you go ahead and put them into their enclosed area, like I said, the biggest thing is keeping them dry over the summer. That's what you'll really need more than anything else. That's really how they're gonna end up expiring, is they're gonna end up getting wet over the summer and rotting. And we do have a selection on sale right now in one of our greenhouses. We do have a few of these early bloomers right now, as well as a lot more of the ivy style leaves, if you guys wanna go check them out. And it's interesting just to go look, even if you're not purchasing, because you'll start seeing that snowflake pattern. What I mean by that is everyone is totally different. So you can really pick out a one of a kind kind of plant that way, whereas it normally they're a little bit more in line with what they look like. So is it a seed that drops that you could actually... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be coming off the flower. So if you looked at the flower as it's getting pollinated, mm -hmm. you'll be able to go ahead and actually see the seed form just like anything else in nature. That seed's going to go ahead and be fertile if it's pollinated correctly and drop and it's going to create its own little tuber down the road. Yes, yes, every variety of flowers. Uh, yes, some of them could be a little bit taller. We have some that are white, some that are pink, some that are more lavender. So it's based on just your own um, personal, you know, personal opinion on what you like best. There's so many varieties, and that's why I said I would take some time to just go look at the, all of them together, because normally you can't see that. We're showing you one, right. uh, but this way you're seeing, oh my gosh, they really are so different, and they're, they're they're more personal that way because you're getting something really that you're looking for genuinely. I mean, would you expect them to spread though with the seed? Or yeah, is it really it'll, it'll spread with yeah, seed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'll see patches. We clean up a lot of our baby plants in the garden, yeah. things that have seeded. We're looking for just certain cultivars there or like our agaves, they will end up having babies. We start removing a lot of those to keep that structure the same. It's just that simple gardening principle to kind of clean up, you know, what you don't want spreading around. But with that, that's going to be a very slow seeding plant. It's not going to really spread too much over the course of time. You'll see a little one drop down and then that kind of thing. And they're very tiny and it takes a long time to get started. So unless you really know it's there, there's a good chance that it's probably never going to make it anyways. Yeah, I have some intention probably. And then Mother Nature, every now and again, you see a weed growing out of the uh, cement, so, or a rose growing out of the cement. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments? How about rabbits? Do they them? Nope, nope. Like I, t like I said earlier, squirrels want to misplace their um, hickory nuts, and then they'll run off with them. They'll chew on them. And then I had uh, in my house about that big, I have two of them that are just sitting in my pathway in my garden, squirrels. <laughs> yep. 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 Exactly. And they won't actually eat them. They just think it, it's uh, what they remember. You know, it's in a weird spot. It's being dug in somewhere. So, and it's very similar to that style. It's got that real hard kind of tuber where that nut would be very similar. Mm -hmm. Oh, they are. They are. And so, well, I appreciate everybody coming out today and let's take some time to walk through the gardens and pay attention because even throughout all of our woodland areas, as well as some of the sun areas like I was showing you, you're going to find cyclamen all over the place with the hellebores. It's kind of two of the things that set off the winter garden because it gives you that color and that foliage as we're looking at some of the hellebores as well as the arums that are coming up. <clears throat> yes, mm -hmm. yep, that's an under woody eye. They were just having them start to come up. Uh, they'll start coming up for us between, um, I'd say early January, mm. late December, depending on some of the very southern cultivars. Okay. And then as we get up uh, to some of the more northern cultivars, they'll start in March, April, and bloom through June. Can you start them out in a pot? Which ones? Oh, no. the cyclamens? Yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, a lot of times they used to sell these in the 
uh, floral shops in the winter when they're blooming and everything else in a little thing, everybody usually threw them away because when it went dormant, they thought it died. And it didn't die, so they threw them all away. <laughs> So this has been uh, very similar to that time of year where they'll have them in bowls. You'll see irises in bowls the same way. That type of thing depends on your time of year with it all. But they do do good in pots. I would recommend them outside though. Um, they just, uh, unless you have the environment inside that they really want to be in, it's more of an outdoor plant in my opinion. From the, on the internet, you look it up and then talk more about indoor than they do outdoor. Yeah, and I see better results with them being out indoors. Like I said, it seems like it uh, kills through in one, in one cycle. Like an amaryllis, it, you plant it inside and it's never gonna come back, it's done, unless you put it in dirt. I see cyclamen once and they're propagated that way in the same kind of contextual thought. Keeping them dry in, uh, in, in July or something like that? Uh, dry, dry as soon as they go down. They have to be okay. almost bone dry their entire summer. They're all going to be spring and summer dormant. And uh, basically, like I was expressing, there's a center to that. And if moisture gets down in that center, it's going to start rotting it. Right. And then it, that's pretty much one of the major reasons you would actually have them expire okay. is because of that. And then um, for planting uh, the permatil in dirt, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just enough to give it a little bit of hold to everything. Uh, the permacell works really good if you have a vole problem. It can, de it can deploy them to different areas. They are persistent. So just try to chase them to your neighbor's house. <laughs> You're not going to get rid of them. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate you guys coming on our little walk today. Anything else we can do, just find somebody in a gray shirt, ask a question, and we'll be happy to help you out. My pleasure.